Well, hi everybody and good morning here from Finland. This is uh, Michael uh, Robbins with uh, two years standing by here for a broadcast that's coming up and you'll be able to see the time there, I believe, in your uh, message box, in your chat box. We start at 11.45, uh, which is... Uh, going to be 140, let's see, 11.45, which is 8.45 GMT, and that will be for the uh, exact conjunction. It's the fourth conjunction, really, of Pluto with Vega. And, of course, they're both opposed uh, to Sirius. The exact conjunctions or oppositions of Pluto to Sirius have already taken place, but Vega and Pluto, Vega... Uh, and uh, Sirius are always loosely conjunct within a degree or so. So there's quite a configuration in the sky, and we want to use that to uh, continue to promote the triangle's work. Uh, Leuna Huffines, uh, Tuya, and myself, we have uh, decided to uh, push a little harder when it comes to assembling the triangle's necessary to subjectively encourage and support and propel the spiritual work in the world in these very troubled and chaotic times when the lack of vision is pronounced and when erroneous visions which are leading humanity astray are doing so much uh, damage. So the next nine years are the years of uh, the last cycle in the era of the forerunner and you know nine is a complete cycle probably at WASAC of the year 2025 that's what we're really looking at so it's even a tiny bit less than nine years and we have our work cut out for us and one of the great uh, issues of course is the um, triangles work and how we can expand that to what has come to be in our minds at least the magical number um, 100,000. We're told that uh, Alice Bailey told a co-worker um, at the Lucis Trust in the early days that if 100,000 triangles could be formed, and I assume, you know, triangles of, of good quality, then um, the world situation, uh, as dire as it is, could be turned around. And that's what we want to do. But of course, in order to do that, we have not only to do the triangles work. We've been, uh, as part of the ASK program, every Wednesday morning, we've been advancing the idea of triangles and offering a meditation for everybody the, that you can continue as you form your triangles. And we have the uh, global triangles at gmail.com for anybody who wants to sign up with our particular thrust. Of course, the Lucis Trust, is, you know, is the grandmother or grandfather of all of this. So they have their Triangles Network and other groups around the world uh, sponsor Triangles Networks. And it's all part of one big network. So if people want to work with us in our particular program, just write uh, globaltriangles <clears throat> at gmail.com. Uh, just want to um, make sure that <laughs> you see there. I thought, oh, there's quite a number of us here. Very happy to see you. And... Um, yeah, I'm just going to make a few little adjustments here. Well, all right. We've been meaning to look into the academics of the Triangles Network. Actually, DK did not say a great deal about the Triangles' work. What he said was very pithy, very direct, very simple, uh, unavoidable in its implications, and he talked about how close this work was to his heart, you know, and how it reached into the high levels of Shambhala and touched potentially the Buddhas of activity and Sanat Kumara at the center of that triangle uh, of the Buddhas of activity and how the Triangles Network could be used in an emergency and, you know, there's no telling what kind of human or planetary emergencies may be arising during the next number of years. So, so those are the fundamental ideas. You know them well. 
that you form with two other individuals, a soul-infused connection between yourself and circulate the energies of light and goodwill, the goodwill being love in action. And eventually, uh, the will to good will be circulated through these triangles. Perhaps the time is not yet. Perhaps we have enough on our hands if we, if we deal with uh, light, you know, soul illumination and soul love working out as goodwill. And it will strengthen the hands of the men and women of goodwill in the world uh, if we successfully create these triangles of light and triangles of love. So we know the fundamentals, don't we? Now, while DK didn't write a great deal about uh, you know, the triangle's work, except to say how very important it was, and please launch it, and please sustain it, and that it must go on. He says, this work must go on. So he, he rarely is so emphatic as he was with the triangles network. He did offer us a tremendous amount of information about particular triangles, and maybe it will be useful for us to uh, uh, think uh, about the triangles network in general. Uh, we'll we'll be thinking about whether we can offer some kind of uh, weekly approach or bi-weekly approach. We'll see. It'll be decided within a few weeks. Um, uh, teaching about the various kinds of triangles that are available on cosmic, systemic, planetary, and uh, global, and let us say uh, mi a microcosmic level, the level of the human being. The whole thing is... <laughs> The entire etheric w network is meant to become a network of triangles. Right now on our non-sacred planet, it's a network of squares. So we have to bisect the square. We have to esoterically bisect the square. And DK taught uh, about how he had been advised how to do that by by a master or one of his teachers, probably Pythagoras. We have to learn how to esoterically bisect the square for the entire um, planetary network of humanity and also for the uh, for our own etheric network but meanwhile you know we can learn more about the um, possibilities now today Tuya will talk more about this and offer you the uh, you know the the background and the meditative approach uh, to the whole uh, conjunction here of Pluto and Vega uh, Vega is a magical star uh, is a charismatic star, an attractive star, and it has a great deal to do with words of power. That will be discussed. Uh, words of power of a very negative kind are being flooded all over the world, and when Pluto is conjoining uh, Vega, as it will today at, uh, let's see, how does it go here, 10, 10 13, and 51 seconds uh, a.m., uh, when Pluto, uh, which can be a very uh, negative, hellish kind of planet, uh, co-joins uh, the neutral energy uh, of Vega, we can have all kinds of negative mantrams flying out there. But we have to be able to provide uh, the antidote to that, the great words of power, the great beautiful uh, mantrams which can turn the consciousness of humanity around. And of course, uh, that would be the great invocation and many other wonderful words of power and mantrams. We have the issue that Pluto is also a healer. It's a, it's a, a great um, esoteric planet in a certain sense. It's not a sacred planet, but it is an esoteric planet, you know, and no matter how the uh, astronomers today have tried to sort of demote it to a planetoid, believe me, when it's active in your chart, you will feel it. <laughs> so, so Pluto has this effect of being able to cast out from your system all the negativity and heal you and transform you and uh, lift you up from the lower depths into the light, into the light of day. Actually, it's so interesting, the, um, on the Buddhic plane uh, and in connection with Scorpio, we have a kind of uh, uh, a type of light being displayed, and it's called the light of day day. And that is the first time daylight, in the spiritual sense, really hits. It hits on the Buddhic plane, and Scorpio brings us there with the help of Pluto, extricating us from the darkness. 
taking us away from the darkness, lifting us up out of the darkness, not just plunging us into it, but of course sometimes you have to take the plunge before you can be elevated into the light. You know, you have to go through the dark journey, as it were, and every hero, disciple, Hercules, uh, knows about that, is, is in the midst of it, and uh, working in one sign or another. So we're, we're going to be concentrating on, on words of power, on mantrams which elevate the consciousness, and all of this is for the sake of, the, of our local cosmic Christ, who is the Logos of Sirius, and uh, Sirius is involved as in this opposition with Vega and with Pluto. Sir Sirius, the great star of sensitivity, the star of initiation, and the star, uh, well, let's say, the, the, yeah, the, the star system in which uh, no evil in the cosmic sense exists whatsoever. It has been conquered. L let's just put it like this. As, as I'll make an analogy here. As, as Sirius has... Um, is to our sun, so is Venus to our Earth. Uh, Venus is a sacred planet. Uh, relatively, it has conquered a great deal of the negativity that is still rampant on Earth. And in a still more cosmic sense, uh, Sirius is a, um, a, a sacred star. Our sun is not yet a sacred star, just the way our planet is not yet a sacred planet. So Sirius has... Um, conquered those evil tendencies in the cosmic sense which our solar logos is still working on. So Sirius inspires all initiatory progress on our Earth and when we have such a connection as Sirius and Vega together uh, with Pluto there to add the healing touch we really have a very dramatic um, event that we want to capitalize upon. There'll be one more of these, goodness, I, maybe someone will look it up if is coming up, I think, in December or something of that nature, the last time this year that Pluto and Vega uh, will be conjunct. And we want to um, stimulate the triangles network through the serious uh, uh, Vega-Pluto opposition and the Vega-Pluto uh, conjunction. We want to do this Michael. by... Yes, dear. Yes. Sorry, this is too yeah. yeah. it, it, The next one, the last one, will be the 15th of November. Okay, all right, very good, very good. So we have a little bit of time, but we are, uh, we are trying to cleanse our etheric body, cleanse the etheric body of the planet. Now, you know, it's very interesting. In Rule 10 of the Rays and the Initiations, basically we're told how to deal with evil. Now, at first, you know, it, it's got its location on, the, uh, on our astral plane in a place called Marakara. Well, you know, the place of Mara, and Mara is illusion and glamour and all of those uh, negative things, and Kara means the place of. So, but, but what we're supposed to do first is we're supposed to cleanse the ethers of the evil. Uh, and then later on the astral plane we'll deal with it. Maybe, uh, you know, there'll be, a, I understand that I'm trying to find the reference, but a huge attack upon glamour in a few hundred years. But right now we have to drive evil back uh, onto the astral plane from the etheric plane, and our triangles network will help tremendously. Then it will not be able to affect manifestation in the same way. It will not become tangible. It will not be able to uh, consolidate and, and show itself uh, in our physical life. And then we'll deal with it psychologically together in a great uh, affirmation as we stand with spiritual intent. We're beginning even now. I mean, we work in glamour and we work with Meditation 10 um, from Rule Number 10 and we, we cleanse the astral plane, uh, excuse me, the etheric plane, and drive the evil back. Now, you know, seal the door where evil dwells. Well, people say, well, you can't do that psychologically because then you're in big trouble and then the evil will just come back. But frankly, we're told that when it comes to cosmic evil, we're not prepared to deal with it, and Shambhala is dealing with it. So we have to deal with our own glamours first, and then we can make, help them make a concerted attack. And that's part of the work we're going to do today. Now, um, and, and you know, if I, if I only stop talking here, I'm going to give you a chance to ask questions and things like that. But um, I, I want to point out what we might be able to do a little bit here today. We're not going to have a long meeting because 
we have this broadcast coming up in just, uh, well, just two hours, really. Now, if you turn to your esoteric astrology book, which I'm sure every one of you has handy, this is page 50. And um, you, you see some rather uh, dramatic uh, triangles at work here. Now, uh, the, maybe the triangle that we're most interested in, let's see if I can make this a t tiny bit smaller so I can get it all on the page at the same time. You know, okay, let's try 120. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. Okay. <clears throat> so we have Sirius as a major, major energy, and it's working through Cancer, Capricorn, and Saturn. Uh, the two gates, interestingly, the gate into life of those who must know death, which is cancer, and the gate into life of those who know no death, which is Capricorn. And Saturn, the great disciplinarian, is wielding that. The Syrian energies are very, very important to us, and they are wielded by four great stars, or not stars, but planets. Uh, they are wielded by our three synthesizing planets, and they are Uranus, um, uh, uh, Neptune, and Saturn. But way out beyond um, those stars, there is a reputed to be an undiscovered hypothetical planet that we call Isis. And Isis is another name for Sirius. Now, this Isis uh, planet is said to have, uh, I mean, this has to be confirmed, of course, but the astronomers, the mathematicians, and the psychics who have investigated this, they said, well, Isis has a period around our sun of about 360 years, which is very interesting because our Earth has a period of about 360 days. So uh, if this speculation is correct, then there's a very close connection between uh, this particular uh, transmitting planet, Isis, transmitting of Syrian energy, and our Earth. Now, you know, th th this is a great triangle we're seeing here. Sirius, the great bear, and the Pleiades. And sometimes uh, it is the little bear with uh, the amazing uh, monadic uh, directoral star Polaris in it that is uh, substituted for Sirius. Sirius being, in a way, on a lower turn of the spiral and a blind for the little bear for Ursa Minor. Now this is a major, major triangle. It's a cosmic triangle. And uh, from it come the energies of will <coughs> in the cosmic sense. The great bear gives us the will energy and it works through Aries and Libra. And Vulcan, uh, a first-rate planet, is the planetary distributor of it. This is, a, if you really want to get into the details of this thing, I have um, done some commentaries on the entire esoteric astrology book, and they can be found on Makara, uh, makara.us. And there I go into excruciating detail, but not really enough. But anyway, a lot of detail about these connections. I won't do that right now. Um, but anyway, uh, the Pleiades represent the, the third aspect of divinity and come through two signs very important for discipleship, Gemini and Sagittarius, and Mercury being a fourth-ray planet, but also monadically probably a third-ray planet connected with the third aspect of divinity. And then Sirius is our representing uh, the second aspect, the love-wisdom aspect of divinity. And it, it sponsors all manner of Christ-like love. It's a kind of cosmic Christ in the local sense. All kinds of Christ-like love within our solar system and <clears throat> upon our planet, particularly our planet having a very close connection with it. But what I want to focus on is, <clears throat> excuse me, this, the seven solar systems of which ours is one. Now, uh, this is not confirmed, but within these seven solar systems, we will find, I believe, not only our sun, but we will find Sirius as well. Sirius doing double duty uh, here in, in its own independent sense as part of a greater triangle, but also part of the seven solar systems. And what I want to point out uh, is that there are seven major stars 
in these seven solar systems. Our sun is one. Hypothetically Sirius is another. Hypothetically Vega is another. So this is our cosmic logos. This is the one in whom our solar logos lives and moves and has his being. So we are enfolded within this great divinity which expresses through seven major stars. Now, when Nicholas Nilan and I were doing astrology work, we speculated uh, upon which those stars may be and what chakras they may represent. See, it's all starting from up here, and on, on a day like this, when we have a conjunction of Pluto, and of Pluto with one of the stars in the seven solar systems, it's going to be important with really with two of the stars in the seven solar systems. So let me let me give you a little rundown uh, about what these seven solar systems may be. Now, of course, some of this has to be a little speculative, but we do know it's the seven solar systems of which ours is one. So uh, you know, obviously, our solar system is within this sevenfold structure. And that doesn't mean that in this cosmic logos there may not be other stars of a lesser quality, just like we have seven major chakras and a lot of minor chakras. You know, there's no need to get into all of that. It's almost certain by the law of analogy that that would be the case. But there are going to be seven major stars within this system in which, now this is the important part, in which our sun plays the role of the heart center. Okay, uh, uh, this is a kind of a local one about whom not may be said kind of a cosmic logo. As a matter of fact, if I can turn here uh, to, okay, I'm going to turn here to uh, Treatise on Cosmic Fire, and I'm going to go over here to page 293 and take a look at these great entities. They are really fantastic. And um, they start with a human being, then they go up to a planetary logos, a heavenly map. They go up to a solar logos, and each time you see that the chakras change uh, their nature. Uh, in, in a solar logos, for instance, the whole planetary scheme is a chakra. In a, in a planetary logos, a chain is a chakra, and so forth. In a man, etheric centers. But now take a look at the cosmic logos. Our local cosmic logos has seven major solar systems, and a chakra is the solar is a solar logos itself. And there's a lot of detail here, but it's only necessary to say that our solar system is enfolded within a great being called the cosmic logos. And uh, well, you know, it's a to me, it's a kind of one about whom not may be said. But when you go a little bit higher you find out that there is this being called the unknown, and that is the true one about whom not may be said, and constellations or, co uh, uh, constellations or the vehicles of cosmic logoi are the chakras in this great being. So this is the being beyond which we really can't go, and it's much, much smaller than a galactic logos or a galactic being, but it's very, very influential. See, our whole triangle's network uh, is going to be a, a conduit for love, wisdom, because our solar locus is a heart center in this great cosmic logos. So the flowing in of love through the, through the triangle's network, and of course light accompanies it, and the will of God is love, so the flowing in of love will change the whole picture within humanity. If we can just feel deeply enough, that's the idea, we got to feel deeply enough and we have to have the right kind of will to um, make this happen. We have to support these things by will. So study that compilation there, or rather tabulation, on page 293 of a um, Treatise on Cosmic Fire. If you want to get things in proportion and understand the next bigger and bigger uh, uh, atom in which we are enclosed. Okay. So now I'm going to give you a rundown on what I think, at least, are the seven solar systems. And maybe Nicholas and I have a little bit of variation here. Um, suffice it, we begin by saying that our sun is a great heart center. Okay. Now, it's uh, uh, the, the 
star uh, Fomalo, uh, much connected with Neptune, is uh, hypothetically at least a solar plexus center. Um, I'm going to give you the ones we agree upon. The, um, the star Sirius, well, no, let, let, let me go to Vega. Vega is found in the in Lyra, the lyre, the seven-stringed instrument. And uh, it is a, a star towards which our entire um, solar system may be gravitating. It's a little bit smaller than Sirius, a little less powerful. It's about 26 light years away at the present uh, reckoning, and we may be heading in that direction. And I'm having the sense that it has a lot to do with the magical use of incantation through the throat center. It's a hypnotic, charismatic, word of power, magical star. I'm associating it with the throat center of the cosmic logos. There's also uh, a star called the little dog, or Procyon. This is Sirius, is the big dog, and Procyon is the little dog. I associate that with the Ajna center of this being. And it's very, very possible that uh, Sirius itself represents the head center of our local cosmic logos. This is still speculative. Uh, some b people believe it's the Ajna center. Some people believe it to be the head center. Now, I'll get into the controversial area. There is a, um, well, I won't do that yet. There, there is a double star. Uh, Alpha and Beta Centauri, and those Centaur stars represent the sacral center of our local uh, cosmic logos. And then we get down to the eagle, and the eagle tries to fly up uh, to the heavens. I believe it can be associated with the base of the spine center of our local cosmic logos. The, now, what we're really interested in right now is Vega and Sirius. And Vega, as I say, may represent this wonderful effect of incantation through the throat center. And Sirius giving kind of the, it, it's the strongest of those stars, giving us the great effulgence which may represent the head center of our local cosmic logo. So is that clear? I'll start from the top and go down. There is the, uh, let's, let's speculatively put Sirius at the head center. Uh, let's put Procyon at the Ajna center. Let's put Vega at the throat center. We know our sun is the heart center. Then the star Fomalo, it's very close to Pisces the fish in the solar plexus center. Then Alpha and Beta Centauri, uh, a double star in the sacral center. And then Altair at the base of the spine center, where it can fly to the heavens and join Sirius in some respect. Okay. So I start out with a really large context to show us why, when we have a place within these seven solar systems, why this conjunction of Pluto with Vega is really, really important. We've got to watch the words we say. We have to speak words of power. We have to speak those words which will inspire individuals to seek the path of light. And we have to counteract the negative hypnotic mantra, mantrams of the Black Lodge, which want to hypnotize us into a materialistic attitude and thereby forego our spiritual opportunities. So this is, uh, this is quite a, a task we have on our hands. And we have been equipped through the trans Himalayan teaching with the necessary mantrams, with the necessary words of power, and we've been equipped with the great invocation, which at this time is the greatest of the words of power available to us in our major instrument in preparing uh, men's minds and hearts for the reappearance of the Christ. Uh, it's the way that we can really facilitate the intention of the hierarchy. So we really have to watch our words. We don't want... <coughs> excuse me. We don't want the words of death to come forth from our lips or, or in our mind, our thoughts. Uh, there may be special use for such words, but we're not the type that can use those at the moment. We, we want words of loving, lighted power to issue 
from our throat center and to go into that great ray three project in a way called the triangle you know the triangle is the symbol of the third ray and it reaches up to these third ray beings who are the buddhas of activity and it links everything together so that at last we can become a truly soul infused planet now you know uh I, I unfortunately I have too much to say um, <laughs> and but I think what I'm going to do for a moment here see uh, basically what I have here uh, DK gave from page 404 to I think page 500 or page 505 in the esoteric astrology book he gave a whole chapter a hundred pages on the science of triangles now it seems to me that we should want to understand something about that. Even though in a very humble, regular, uh, simple, heartfelt way, we are working with our triangular triangles every day, and we're, we're simply feeling them with depth, and we're, we're simply connecting with the people as souls and all that, and connecting with the network. Even though we're doing that, and that's the important part, really, we should know something about the context in which we are doing it and how great a cosmic solar systemic planetary kingdom related and and human being related triangles are operative the whole thing uh, is about triangles and the relationship between energies in our solar system are meant to be triangular now the Sun has done a great thing the solar logos doesn't have an etheric body that's filled with triangles. No, it's an etheric body filled with circles. And that, of course, is the next objective. But right now, we're pretty square, and we have to operate towards uh, from squareness to triangularity. So before I launch into this, I, as a matter of fact, I better not take too much time today. I better just kind of make this general and, you know, have a few questions here and a little bit of discussion. Um, I would like uh, us to be able to study the science of triangles together so we have the academic basis for our uh, spiritual work, our spiritual transformative work. It can't hurt you, you know, it, it can't hurt you, and maybe you're not an astrologer, it doesn't make any difference. We're talking about the connection of great beings in a triangular method. All right, so now what I'm going to do since I've ranted on here a bit, uh, I'm going to uh, ask you if you have any comments or questions that you would like to offer. Now, here's what you can do. You can either raise your hand, <clears throat> and um, you will be able to, uh, you know, some, someone will see you. Either I'll see you or one of our staff members will see you. You can either raise your hand or you can write a question out and uh, one of our staff members uh, will uh, give me that question and I'll do my best to address it. The, uh, but I just want to review the main points. Today is a special day at 10, 13, and 51 seconds GMT, Universal Time. We have a Pluto, Sirius, a Pluto Vega conjunction oppose Sirius. These two stars are part of our local cosmic logos in which our Sun is a heart center. Pluto can be very death dealing but it can also be a tremendous healer so we want to be able to know the transformative words of power. Pluto the transformer, the transformative words of power working through Vega. We want to apply that to the life of our microcosm and to our groups and to humanity and we want to realize that all of this is for the sake of Sirius which is inspiring um, initiation uh, in within our solar system and especially on our earth at this time and is inspiring the Christ who is a Syrian initiate I believe of the third degree a transfigured initiate in relation to Sirius so we want to bring in the Syrian energy, the Vagan word of power energy, the Pluto transformative energy into our uh, network of triangles and into our own particular triangles. Okay, with that preamble, does anybody have anything they would kind of like to uh, 
suggest, uh, question, whatever. Okay, let me know. I'm looking for your hands or for a question mark if you'd like to uh, offer. I, you know, and don't don't be daunted by esoteric astrology. It's just you know, it's 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 DK's most occult book. He says because it's all about energy. So that's what we are. We are an idea. We are energy, and so is uh, so are all these great beings. And we want to know how they connect with each other. And the method of triangular connection is the method we are trying to promote here on our planet, and it's very important in our solar system. Triangular connection. We could go into your etheric body and see all kinds of triangles happening, and when they are perfected, then you are liberated. Okay? So it, it has very practical effect. Anybody that would like to say anything here, um, I know I'm expanding the subject, but why not? Okay, any questions? Michael, this is yes, Tuya. Tuya. If yes. there is not coming now any questions, please talk something about the, uh, where the triangle work is based upon uh, the importance of it. And, uh, and how, how does it actually practically work? Well, you know, every one of the... the there are always three aspects of divinity. Uh, you know, the will, the love, and intelligence, right? And every triangle, every point in the triangle represents one or other of those principles. Now, in order to bring life into balance, in order to bring threefold man into balance, you know, you might even say the, the head, the torso, and the, you know, everything below the diaphragm, threefold uh, human being, we have to bring will, uh, love, and intelligence all into uh, a proper relationship. Or we might even say uh, will, will to good, love, and light. Light uh, can represent the third aspect of divinity. Sometimes it represents the second. So if we want to have a balanced uh, planetary manifestation, which is truly in line with the planetary soul. Now, this is the thing, because sometimes souls are called triangles. Well, if you create an energy flow, which is triangular, it automatically uh, invokes the soul. And it makes it easier for the soul to uh, transmit itself through the vehicle. Now, we're, we're, we're squares. We're all squares down here. And but we're a lot closer to being triangles than Mars is. <laughs> so Mars has a pattern of squares too, and so does every other non-sacred planet. But inwardly, DK tells us we are sacred. So we have to create responsiveness to soul by triangulating uh, will, love, and light throughout our mechanism and throughout our groups and throughout the etheric body. Now, you know, it, the method, of course, is easy. Uh, not, you know, we shouldn't just think it's so simple as to be uh, not deserve concentration. He says you have to have deep feeling when you do this and a lot of will. Okay, but the method is easy. You're thinking of your fellow human beings, two of them, and you are there together as soul-infused personalities, and light is flowing between you, and love is flowing between you, and you sound the great invocation while visualizing each other and producing the flow of light between you, the flow of love between you, and on out into the triangle network. Now, that is a cosmic thing. It, it, it's not only operating microcosmically right here within the human being, uh, it's operating in our groups, on our planet, in our solar system. It just goes on and on and on. Probably there are, you know, galaxies that are triangulating. We know we're very connected with this super being called Andromeda. We're the Milky Way, Andromeda is there. What's that? Is there another one that is going to help triangulate that particular opposition? And on it goes until we get Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva of the entire universe with the universal logos standing in the very center of the cosmic Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. So basically, we're simply trying to reflect divine order in our own system by the use of the creative imagination, by understanding the connections, and using the great power 
called uh, the word of power called the great invocation. Now, to you, I don't know if that's what you expected of me, but uh, that's how I answered it. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, you know, look, I'm not emphasizing in this particular discussion the kinds of things that we do on Wednesday. Every Wednesday, whether it's at 5 a.m. GMT or 5 p.m. GMT, we keep alternating. Right now we're in the AM cycle. We, we deal with the triangles from a very practical perspective and you performing your triangles work. But what I would like to do in this series of programs, teaching about flow between the energy points, is to expand the mind so we understand the, the context of the triangles in which we are working. Now, how does it go with these, with these five planetary centers? Does it go like uh, New York, London, and Darjeeling, and then New York, Geneva, and Tokyo? Uh, there are five planetary centers, and they form two triangles, and New York is repeated twice for some reason. And within the flow of energy of those triangles, New York, London, and Darjeeling, you know what a tremendous connection London uh, or England and uh, India have had, so that's connected there. Within the flow of that triangle and the New York, Geneva, and um, uh, Tokyo triangle, redemptive force is flowing increasingly to redeem the consciousness of humanity. And the masters will appear uh, in those planetary centers, and they will triangulate with each other, and their disciples will be part of that triangulation, and it will have a tremendous effect on the reappearance, uh, uh, promoting the reappearance of the Christ. All kinds of triangles are operating all the time. We're unaware of it. Look, you know, if, if we could just link up our crown center with our Asna center and our Alta Major center and get that triangle really rotating, we would automatically become magnetic healers. And, and our uh, third eye, our, our inner eye of Shiva, around the pineal gland, etherically, would blossom, and we would see uh, the many as the one. And, and we would, if we could get this triangle really going, uh, we would be achieving the third initiation. And there are just so many triangles right here in the human system. You know, I can point out to you something of interest, I think. Um, if I go to Cosmic Fire, uh, page, uh, maybe page 70 or so. Let's see if I'm, if I'm on the beam here or I'm off the beam. Uh, maybe I'm uh, going to be off the beam. <laughs> Somewhere here is... Oh, 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 it, 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 it does exist. It's and it is cosmic fire, and it has to do with the seven head centers, etc., etc., etc. But I'm not doing too well with that right now, so sorry. Uh, seven head centers. Cen uh, centers. Let, let's, let's see. Seven head centers. Am I in a treatise on cosmic fire? I am. Okay, well, I'm sorry that I don't seem to, to have that. Seven head... How do you spell centers? Oh, that way. All right, let's see if we... Aha, uh -huh. right. It's not page 70, it's page 170. All right, there we go. Look at those triangles. This is right here in the human energy system, a very primitive triangle that everybody has to have just to stay alive. The shoulder center, you know, a little higher than the heart center between the shoulder blades. A center near the diaphragm, a little... Uh, it's a above the diaphragm, and the spleen, that's the vital triangle. Now, according to the triangle that you have activated in your system, so that's the kind of advancement spiritually that you are expressing. From the astral plane, the base of the spine, the solar plexus, and the heart. The uh, man uh, controlled by the mental plane, the base of the spine, the heart, and the throat, okay? Throat taking the place of the solar plexus. Now, advanced man, he's partially controlled by the ego. Now, that may be, you know, some of us here. The heart, the throat, and the head, the four lesser centers, 
uh, in the head and their synthesis, the alta major. So five are operating there. And by the time we are going toward the third initiation, we have the heart, the throat, and all seven head centers operating. And these are the centers within the head. And then spiritual man from the third degree to the fifth initiation, the heart, the seven head centers, and the two many petal lotuses, which presumably uh, would mean the Ajna center and also the crown center. So you can see that the degree of activation of triangles within your system determines your level of evolution. Now, probably in any particular life, each one of us is working on a different uh, grouping of triangles with one shining out more particularly than all the rest because that's the one we're focused on. So you can study this, page 169 and 170 in a treatise on uh, cosmic fire and it gives you a really good foundation. Okay, now I've been, you know, talking on and on. Are there any questions you would like to propose, any comments that you have, uh, anything you would like to say? I, I do feel hesitant about really launching into the big work here. Uh, look at that. You know, here's a compilation with, with so many of the triangles that DK uh, speaks about. And um, let's see if I can make it just a little bit bigger so we get one to a page. Okay, and you know, if I were just to go on here, all these different triangles are discussed. Now, every one of them is having its effect and here are some crosses as well. We can't forget the crosses. But, you know, uh, that he, he pays much attention to the crosses as well as the triangles. And the cross has more to do with matter, but also to some higher uh, constituents as well. Because if we really look at the way the planes are divided, uh, we have four superior planes above three inferior planes. And that's, I think, uh, very interesting. We have the, uh, the cosmic ethers, of which there are four. Uh, the cosmic ethers are, you know, the logoic plane, the monadic plane, the atomic plane, and the buddhic plane. And those four are superior right above the mental, emotional, and astral plane. And you get down to our own etheric body. Maybe what I should do here is just try to, uh, yeah, I think what I'll try to do, excuse me, is um, I will um, go to the AAB diagrams. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, how the triangles are always at work. And let's see, open this, open with, okay. Number eight, yep, there we go. Okay. Notice right here on the our own physical etheric plane that we have four ethers above three dense subplanes. So the four above the three are very important, but then in other contexts, the three above the four are more important. Always triangles are involved, and you see how we are triangulating here uh, in this particular diagram. They are everywhere. So I don't think it is too much of an exaggeration to say that if we begin to wrap our minds around the ways that energies are flowing in triangles, we're going to begin to understand much, much more about the context of our life, how we can improve our life, how we can align resonantly in our own system with these wonderful triangulating energies in which we live and move and have our being. Okay, yak, yak, yak. Does anybody else, <laughs> would somebody like to um, offer a thought or uh, uh, a complaint? How about a complaint? <laughs> okay. Um, if, if anyone would like to, to, to ask anything, say anything, or... Um, uh, question anything, whatever, this would be a moment we could do it. I am probably going to hesitate to get into the the really big work here, although I might read one paragraph. Okay. Um, yes, Brett. Or I heard something going on there. There seems to be one question. I saw a name. Yes. Rebecca says, no complaints. No complaints? Oh, goodness, goodness. What would a disciple be without complaints? <laughs> Michael. 
Yes, dear. This is Tulia. I was exactly yes. Yes. Um, the day when we had this um, reappearance um, meditation. I was uh, actually contemplating about complaints. And I think I made within myself this kind of um, uh, uh, great thing, and, and, and how would I say? A second me, the, or the observer, looking at me, uh, my words, because uh, I was uh, reflecting about how much when I'm going, let's say, to grocery stores, wherever I walk, I hear people complaining everywhere, in the newspapers, in programs, in uh, private discussions, everybody complaining about an, being, an other human being, about uh, circumstances, about everything. We have um, several challenges um, in health-wise. Everybody has heard about all kinds of um, uh, coming problems. Uh, antibiotics are not going to be functioning. The clean water is ending, air is everywhere polluted. Yes, so, but I was thinking, could it be so that the complaints, and especially by disciples, are some of those reasons why we have this fog, so thick fog? The Our fog. job is to penetrate. Yeah. Fog, yes, I mean yeah. the cloud, mm. or a cloud of glamour, and um, uh, thinking about that when we all know that we have come at this time to help uh, hierarchy, to help Christ, to move forward into the world of darkness, to, th to bring the new message from Sanat Kumara, the new teaching, mm. it is absolutely so that the triangle formation, because the, when we think about that we are the cells in the aura of the planet Earth, so the triangle formation in the aura is um, that how we can change the, uh, the squares into the triangles, mm -hmm. and how we are empowering the power from within because we must bring the power from within into the outer world. And mm. in that sense, there cannot be no complaints. Mm -hmm. We, we must start yeah. to bring forth this power of the word in a vega position at the moment, how it is functioning via the Pluto, and Pluto is one of those key planets when we think about initiation. That is how we must bring forth the, the word into the activity. Thank you, thank you to you. You know, I'm I'm reminded. Um, you know, I I'm a reader of Agni Yoga and um, for so many years, and I it's something stuck in my mind. And Master Moria said I can only paraphrase it right now because I can't f find the. He says, "Why do you obstruct your path?" with a load of complaints. It's as if every complaint is like a stone, a stone obstruction upon your path. And, you know, in the, in the yoga that we're given, the Yoga Sutras, we're, we're told that we have to achieve contentment. Now, the, I would say at the same time, divine discontent has to exist, but we have to be content with what circumstance present to us and not fall into the self-pity, which is oftentimes the root of complaint. Now, self-pity, as you know, is one of the roots of glamour, and so that relates to what Tuya said about fog. You know, so, you know, things aren't going our way and circumstances are not uh, particularly conducive to what we desire, so we complain out of self-pity and we create glamour and create the fogs and we obstruct our way, as Master Moria has said, by our load of complaints. Anyway, you know, I was half joking about it because I say, what would a disciple be without complaints? Well, 
what would <laughs> what would a disciple be without complaints? Maybe an initiate. Maybe that's what a disciple would be without complaints. Anyway, um, we have so much to study together, um, and you know I don't know how many of you are into uh, esoteric astrology, but. Uh, with astrology, triangles, ray triangles, chakra triangles, the levels uh, uh, cosmic, solar systemic, planetary, kingdom, uh, human, etc., we have plenty to work upon to gain a much better understanding of how the soul can work through all of these different relationships. Okay, thank you, Tuya. Does anybody, uh, I, I saw a question there somewhere. Um, is there anything, um, uh, uh, Brett uh, or, yes. or Joe? Uh, yes. Yes, go ahead. Nicole says, this is Nicole, would humanity be building the Antikarana? Uh, hu humanity in general through its um, disciples is building the Antikarana, you know, and the first stage, of course, here, let me, let me get that, uh, I'm going to get kind of a egoic lotus uh, picture here, if I, if I can, uh, may take just a second for me to do that, but I want to get the right one, because, um, a Fellowship Cosmic Fire, okay, and name, and there we go, I want to get a good picture of the Egoic Lotus, um, okay, well, I don't know, it says open, open, all right, and now, corrected in blue, and now this one, all right, I hope I'm doing this correctly, yeah, okay, so here's an interesting thing, DK portrays the Antikorana as a triangle, this picture of the egoic lotus shows the structure of the antikorana. We're usually thinking of it only uh, in terms of the direct connection between the monastic uh, mental unit and the monastic permanent atom. This is how we usually think of the antikorana. But what humanity is doing, or what we're all trying to do really here, is get connection with our own soul and with the soul of humanity, and that's the first stage of the antikorana. There's also a stage which we, as uh, soul-infused beings, who can actually focus on the higher mental plane, we can reach out to the highest part of the highest of the higher mental plane, and that's the way the Antikorana used to be built, as far as I'm concerned. Now, DK gave a new method that allows us to connect with uh, the mental unit with the monastic permanent atom. In other words, our normal mentality with uh, 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 and if, uh, kind of a, a triadal mentality that comes from the abstract mind. And so indeed we are involved in building this triangle and m each one of us, different people, different disciples are busy working on different aspects of it. DK's presentation of the, of the direct method which so, so to speak bypasses the egoic lotus is a relatively new thing. And you know what's really interesting here? Mercury is the planet that is particularly connected with the Antikorana. And Mercury uh, is, well, Mercury is to Venus as uh, the Buddha is to uh, Lord Maitreya. You know, making analogies there if I can. The, the Buddha has a third ray monad, and uh, the Lord Maitreya has a second ray monad. And uh, I think it will be demonstrated, although right now you could simply call it speculative, is that Mercury will be shown to have a third ray monad and Venus a second ray monad. So 3 2, 3 2. And basically, Mercury is the triangulating planet. And it's involved in building the Antikorana. So that's why Master DK, who is sometimes called Mercury, just the way the Buddha was called Mercury, he presents the triangle, the, the science of triangles, uh, coming from the three Buddhas of activity who are, in a way, Mercury. They are the third aspect of divinity. So, indeed, yeah, we are, we are triangulating, and as we triangulate, we build the Antikorana, and we build the Antikorana right up into the 
council chamber of Shambhala eventually, <laughs> and uh, towards Sanat Kumara himself. I guess that's the quick answer. The rest is research. Okay. Okay, other thoughts, friends? Anything else you would like to say or suggest? Uh, don't be shy. You're perfectly welcome to say anything. I, I just, you know, open my mouth on the assumption that maybe 40% of what comes out will not be uh, co totally kosher the way I would like to say it, but, you know, just be brave and say what you want to say or ask what you want to ask. Michael? Yes, Brett. Nicole says, because Pluto being in the third house and Sirius in the ninth? I see how you're doing that. Uh huh. Uh, well, um, okay. You see, the, the maybe maybe I should ask. You know, because Pluto has you know maybe more to do with the lower mind. It does definitely have to do with the concrete researching mind, and Sirius has much to do with the elevated abstract mentality. But let me try to understand before I go off here about what you mean. You see, see, you see, in a way, we're, we are dealing with sort of Sagittarius and Gemini, with higher mind and lower mind. We are dealing with that when we deal with the Antikarana. But when we say Pluto in the third house, Sirius in the ninth, uh, what is the thought in your mind? So I can be clearer. You can write it out for Brett or whatever, or speak it out, if you will, whichever. Uh, thanks, Michael. Um, now, this morning I drew uh, the event chart. Um, ah, and, okay, okay. <laughs> and okay. in Melbourne, though, uh, so I don't know whether for the rest of the world it's the same, but on the chart that I drew for um, this morning's uh, GMT, um, Pluto seems to be in the, ni in the third house, conjuncting Vega, obviously, and Sirius in the ninth, so I was wondering whether this conjunction and opposition is not signaling a, an increase in the planetary um, antigorana that um, humanity is building. I know that Christ, 2,000 years ago, has uh, started the planetary antigorana, but with his reappearance uh, shortly, I'm wondering if us, uh, the, 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 um, the disciples, are not helping in this building, in filling up the, the mm. bridge, so to speak, and that mm. this opposition um, is not, in a way, signaling this planetary um, antikorana, mm. uh, that, that we are building. Yeah. Interesting point, uh, Nicole. Of course, you know, obviously that's always going to change uh, depending upon the time that these conjunctions occur, but it is an interesting symbol. Did you, So you drew it up for London and you used GMT? No, Melbourne. Uh, oh, I Melbourne. Used okay. Okay. Well, that's very local. Melbourne. Very local, but maybe everyone yes. in Melbourne is really helping. <laughs> okay. Yes, obviously. Yeah, that's why I wasn't sure. No, no. It, it's not going to be uh, the same for everybody, of course, because the rising sign is going to going to change uh, wherever you happen to be. But, you know, take advantage of what you've got, because the, the idea is very interesting. We really do need to make a, uh, a link between higher mind and lower mind, okay? And mm. disciples need to do that and be set an example for humanity. And maybe this particular time, you know, learning the right mantrams, the li right words of power, having the right alignment, maybe we can really stimulate this process, and especially if it's so in Melbourne, well, the, there you are. You're right in the middle of it. So, uh, we, but <laughs> okay, we're all involved in the process, but it seems like a special opportunity might exist uh, where you are in the world. I think you know, if 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 we did this for London or, or for what we consider to be the the Greenwich uh, Meridian, and we did it for Universal Time, I haven't done that actually. Uh, uh, usually, tropically, anyway. Uh, uh, Sirius is in the sign Cancer, although very connected with the stars of Gemini, and Vega is in the sign Capricorn, though very connected with the stars of Sagittarius. You know how it goes, sidereal and, mm -hmm. and otherwise. But anyway, uh, maybe if we want like a world chart 
we could do that, or we could put zero degrees of Aries rising, and that would give us also the world chart, and we'd see where things are. But, but I don't think we can generalize all over the world from a particular place, but it does give a nice uh, symbolic hint about what has to happen. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you. Michael, thank you, Nicole, because that was giving me this kind of um, idea about that, how we can actually look when we have these potent energies mm. and um, In important our place. moments, how mm. to work so-called locally or aerially, because all of these centers to which we are connected by our nations are those things which in, in uh, sometimes in the future, why not now, uh, starting to build up the bigger picture and understanding how we actually function within the uh, mm. aura of our own nation and or, of our own area, because this is the one being when we think about humanity. So all of us as all individuals in individual life, we are building everywhere in, from different aspects. Mm, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, Alex, I see uh, your hand is up, so you can go ahead. I assume you want to speak. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me all right? Yep. We're good, Alex. We're good. Yeah. Good. I just wanted to say something about complaints before you I move off the subject <laughs> because it really. <laughs> I know you were joking <laughs> at first, but it's it's so. Uh, I just it just tweaked something that was so valuable. Uh, when I was teaching a course. Um, in the classroom on personal development and citizenship, uh, mm. it well, it it occurred to me you can't be a good citizen, um, mm. you know, unless you're well personally developed. And I was looking at complaints because secondary students I found were so full of complaints about everything. And mm. um, so there's this book, and there was this um, movement in America that was very popular, called the 21 Day Challenge that will change your life. The book is A Complaint-Free World, and oh. it was very, very popular at its time, and I, I think it's still going. Um, they sell wristbands, and um, every time you find yourself complaining, you have to take the wristband off one wrist and put it on the other wrist, and uh -huh. the challenge is to see um, if you can go for 21 days without complaining. And oh, wow. it, it's very interesting, because on one level it looks shallow, but on another level, I saw it working as an area of clearing up glamours and um, the astral world. Um, it defines complaining as to express grief, pain, yes. content, or criticism. Mm. And to actually mm. read the book, take on the challenge, first it's to not speak any of those. And then mm. next, it's not to think any of those. Mm. And mm. the question is, as you said, you know, who would we be without our complaints? Mm. Or as mm. um, I heard Sheldon say in, in a Glamour webinar, you know, who would we be without our story? Mm. And story it, was, it was so, um, it's by Will Bowen, and it's a fabulous book. And it's, I don't suggest you make it a Christmas present for friends who complain. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't okay. go very well. Oh, but that's interesting. It's I'm certainly, yeah. it, um, as far as clearing up thought forms, um, having positive thought forms, and, um, you know, clearing up the astral world, it's really valuable. It was really good. Yeah, astral, you're, you're right about that, because the whole idea of the plaint, you know, in the old, old, the old term, you know, the I the idea of some kind of astral condition of of grief or yes. you know what, what's the word you, you use but in other words things are not right things are not well I'm not accepting what is you know and it goes yes. right against the Raja Yoga thing about contentment I'm sure we would catch ourselves amazingly uh, yeah. quite a bit of the percentage of our our speech would be about uh, protesting some circumstance person or whatever so, so, so it's a really good thought and uh, and and it really would cut at the roots of this self-pity glamour which so many of us on the second ray you know experience in one way or another so uh, th thank you <laughs> thank you for the, for the recommendation <laughs> right appreciate it appreciate it thank you okay um, any other thoughts or questions friends because I think soon we're now going to 
be looking towards um, uh, towards our broadcast, uh, in which we will include the moment of the uh, Pluto Vega conjunction, and it will be, you know, as usual with uh, music and uh, image image and I I hope we've been working very hard on solving our static problem and I think you know we've come a lot closer now so hopefully everything will be quite clear any other thoughts or questions before we be, and we will let you know about the next time we'll get together along these lines okay because um, there's just so much to learn here it's just incredible you say well how can I possibly include all that but somehow, you know, whatever a human being has done, a human being can do. So Master DK has presented all these relationships in the great science of relationship in which we live and move and have our being. So while we're doing the triangles, we might as well study the triangles in which we are immersed. Okay. Anything else? Well, if... Yeah. Okay. If not, if not, then you know, Tui and I want to thank you for attending uh, this uh, webinar long uh, in the waiting, and we will continue with instruction about the science of triangles. Now that you know, there. One of the things you might want to look at before we now. Excuse me for the fact that this is going to look like a blur. I'm not sure how fast we can get there but and or whether this is the wisest way to do it but there is a uh, there is a um, a diagram if anybody can find it for me quicker than the way I'm doing it I would appreciate it uh, that shows exactly how the tri triangular energy circulates it's rather intricate it's rather involved and very very interesting and maybe I'm just gonna have to defer until I find it because I don't want to make you dizzy here by what's going on. Anyway, it uh, it's within those hundred pages. The way the triangle circulates, and I can't remember exactly what it is, whether it's four sixty something or it shows a diamond. And um, basically, if you can follow my cursor here, kind of uh, down this way, and well, you can't follow my cursor. There's no way to do it. I'll demonstrate it for you at a specific time. But now, I think if there's nothing more to be said, we've met for long enough, and we will close with the great invocation. Yes, Brett? Michael? Yes. Michael, Nicole yes. says page 460. Oh, hey, I was pretty close. Thank you, Nicole. Um, 460, yes, yes, yes. And I'll even do this, 460. No, I got the wrong one. Okay coming. I can always count on Nicole to find the reference. All right. That's good. Uh, and uh, okay, now I see what the problem is. I'm just going to be there in just a second. Uh, there it is. All right. That's the one we're going to work on. That's the, that is the esoteric model for the circulation of energy in a triangle and how a higher triangle can evoke a lower triangle. So this is pretty much, you know, the diamond soul. This is pretty much the story of our diamond nature and our access of the higher three creating the lower three which must learn to respond to the higher three. So we will um, we will study that. We will study that, and uh, thank you, Nicole, for orienting me on that point. And um, it's a it's a it is the basis of the whole uh, science of triangles. He does say some other things about how you how each point in the triangle reaches out to three others, and you start to get nine foldness going on and very interestingly the number of the third ray is actually the number nine so it's going to connect everything together and make a mercurian synthesis out of it all and we want to be part of that part of that synthesis okay thank you all right the great invocation friends let's do that followed by the 
word of power, you can sound that. You know, uh, just make sure you're on self mute because otherwise we'll get all those straggling effects. And you know, if I'm um, speaking too fast, you know, because I realize that quite a number of us uh, do not have English as our first language. I apologize for that. And you can write to to you uh, or to me. Uh, and uh, we will try to clarify any points that may have been uh, too quickly uh, presented. But over the time, as we begin to repeat these things, the formation of triangles, uh, so close to Master DK's heart, you know, uh, how he wrote about them so extensively, it will clarify in your minds, be able to begin to triangulate many things in your environment and understand the flow of spiritual energy uh, more completely in your life. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> great invocation. <clears throat> From the point of light, within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. to you and I want to thank you very much and uh, Luna uh, with us who is so important in promoting this Triangles work in her website Triangles of Light uh, we're launching this thing and um, trying to get as many participants as we can so please do think about joining us you can uh, go to Luna's site or you can write to us at globaltriangles at gmail.com and we'll be happy to help engage with triangles or to register any triangle that you have at the moment. In about an hour we're going to begin our broadcast and which will include the actual uh, moment of the Pluto-Vega conjunction and uh, our hope is to offer uh, these programs fairly frequently. We're quite busy now with uh, an initiation mystery week uh, coming up uh, but Re relatively shortly, I hope we can uh, offer these programs on a quite frequent basis, maybe even once a week. We will see. We'll discuss it with uh, 
with Tuya and see what is possible. Okay, everybody, hope to see you at the broadcast. The link uh, should be in the chat box, I believe, and um, yeah, and you probably have received it anyway. So meanwhile, keep the meditative thought about this conjunction coming up, uh, and we'll all be working together to strengthen the Triangles Network. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.